Hello, good evening, and thank you for joining us this uh, evening. Um, I'm going to show you one of the very new platforms that Olympus have um, launched, the EVIS X1, which I'm going to show is a really groundbreaking uh, system which will revolutionize bronchoscopy. Uh, just to introduce myself, I'm Palav Shah. I'm one of the respiratory consultants at the Royal Brompton Hospital and also work at Imperial College London. Uh, these are my conflict of interest disclosures and as you can see that I work with a number of med tech companies in both bronchoscopy and interventional pulmonology um, and hopefully will give you a very unbiased view. So this is the new um, EVIS X1 system uh, which has a number of amazing new imaging modalities. We have features that look at um, improvements in the brightness and color enhancement we have features which look at the texture and also features that look at red dichromatic imaging and therefore focus on blood vessels. I'm going to go through all of these modalities in a bit more detail uh, shortly and also show you their relevance in our bronchoscopic practice. So this is basically what I'm going to focus on. Really, it's um, position and its benefit in terms of uh, procedural practice. Although I'm going to focus on therapeutic procedures, I think you will also see that some of the newer users and new endoscopists or bronchoscopists will have some enhancements which should aid their diagnostic skills. So you can all see this imaging already, uh, which is with our standard uh, system. And you can see that the quality of the imaging is actually still incredible. You can see the different structures. You can see the blood vessels. And to me, this is already a very high quality image. And I cannot imagine how this could be improved. Now, Olympus have. They've introduced this BIMAC imaging system, or in other words, this brightness adjustment imaging, which still maintains the contrast. And with this new imaging system, what you will see is that you can see much deeper within the airways. You can see that the areas with this BIMAC imaging off appear dark, but when you switch on this BIMAC imaging, they appear to clearly delineate the different subsegmental bronchi. Now, to me, this is really important in interventional pulmonology. For example, if I'm doing a radial EBUS procedure and want to enter a specific subsegment, you can imagine that it's going to take me a lot longer without this imaging modality, and I'll be a lot quicker when, if I can actually see the subsegments clearly and insert. Uh, the probe into the appropriate area. So this uh, imaging system really does help uh, with procedures and shortening the duration time of procedures. So just to reiterate, this BIMAC imaging allows us to see deeper bronchial airways and therefore uh, with a number of procedures it will shorten the duration uh, that, uh, and time. Now even for a standard bronchoscopy having brighter, more clear images will mean that we don't need to go deeper into the subsegments to uh, actually be comfortable that there's no abnormal anatomy or abnormal uh, tissue there and therefore uh, shorten even simple diagnostic procedures. Now, uh, these are a couple of slides and you can see uh, the first image on the left is with our standard image with BIMAC off. But the minute you switch on the modality of BIMAC, you can see the little subsegmental bronchi very clearly. You can see the different carina uh, very clearly there. And as I mentioned earlier, this would facilitate any number of interventional and diagnostic procedures with this imaging modality available. Now here's a short video, and you can see initially that the image is very dark. The minute you put BA Mac on, you've, you've got deeper uh, visualization of the subsegments. I'm just going to play that one more time so you can see the difference. That's when it's dark and when it comes on, an immediate improvement in image quality. Now the textual enhancement includes the brightness control. So you have the brightness control, but then you add in the texture and color enhancement. And what it does is it enhances the three, three dimensions of the image. You can see the image on the left is already superb with um, high quality imaging, good depth of penetration with the BMAC on. But if you 
and if you put it onto the TXI mode, what you start getting is this structural components. Now, if you go back to the first image on the left, you can see, although you can see the cartilaginous structures, that you will agree that the cartilaginous structures are much more evident with much more three-dimensional three content in the second image with TXI on. So once again, this allows you to uh, perform your procedure in a lot more detail, allowing you to know exactly where you are, uh, what the tissue quality is like. And this may be very important if you've got a, a plaque-like lesion, um, which may be more obvious with TXI enhancement than without it. So basically what you're seeing is you're improving the color patterns and therefore you can see blood vessels more clearly. You're enhancing the uh, different structures like cartilaginous structures. So this may be a, have a value in detecting early cancers, maybe uh, preneoplastic lesions, uh, plaque-like lesions. You could probably see images like you see the cobblestoning in sarcoidosis more clearly using this image technique than without this TXI Im imaging system on. So again, another revolutionary step forward in the imaging quality that I'd never thought could be improved on. And this is a video showing you with TXI on. So first of all, TXI is off and you can just try and get your eye in there. And you can see that the cartilaginous structures are there, but they're not absolutely evident. And the minute you put TXI on, you can see that the, the it is a much more three-dimensional image than with TXI off. I'm going to play that again one more time to really um, get that message across. So you see, when you have the normal image and then TXI on, there's an immediate increase in the three-dimension factor uh, in the uh, visualization. And I think this will become very important as we do more and more interventional procedures. Now, the RDI or the red dichromatic imaging is, I think, another step forward. Now, you can see the image on the left with the endobronchial image all looks a little bit more uh, vascular. There's a lot of erythema there, but I would not be able to, with my eye, pick up that blood vessel, which is very clearly obvious when you put on the RDI imaging on. You can see that it's a deep blood vessel, and this is of importance if you're doing any interventional procedures. Clearly, I would not choose that as my primary biopsy site. I would choose an area which is less vascular. So this already has a role in reducing complications. For example, if I was doing a procedure such as airway bypass or putting a needle through um, this airway, I would definitely not choose that site. If I was doing a, a superficial uh, cryobiopsy, for example, to get um, tissue diagnosis of a superficial lesion, I would choose an area which is less vascularity than uh, an area with more blood, deeper blood vessels. So I, I would hope that this imaging system will help uh, reduce uh, potential complications when we perform interventional procedures. Um, so it gives us a better understanding of the deeper la layers than we're currently uh, aware of. And here's an example, and you can see at the start of this video with uh, the image there, it all looks very red. You can't tell where the bleeding source is or you can't tell where the blood vessels are. Um, but if you switch on um, this RDI feature, you immediately um, localize the area where the blood vessels and bleeding are from so that you can concentrate on the, uh, those areas. So for example, if you were gonna apply argon plasma photocoagulation, you, want, you wouldn't want to treat the whole surface area where you get risk of um, necrosis and also stricture formation in the future. You could essentially concentrate in just treating those very deep red areas. Similarly, if you are performing an interventional procedure or biopsy, you know exactly what area to avoid and where you should be taking your samples from. So this just shows you all the different technologies that are available on this new platform. Uh, the first image is with um, um, the brightness image enhancement on, and you can see you're seeing much deeper into the segmental airways than without it. 
Below that is the textural enhancement, which brings out those cartilaginous structures and the three dimensions more clearly. You have the NBI feature, which we're all uh, very aware of, the narrowband imaging that we've all used for many years, which allows us to see these capillary loops and venules in more detail. And we know that where there is um, a significant increase in these capillary loops, there may be dysplasia or metaplasia or early carcinoma in situ. And finally, this uh, red dichromatic imaging, the RDI feature, which allows us to see the vessels which are deeper than the superficial vessels, and again, gives us a lot more information about the deeper levels and how to manage our, our procedures and diagnostic procedures accordingly. So we have a number of new bronchoscopes to go with this EVAS uh, X1 system. And first is our standard workhorse bronchoscope, which used to be uh, still 4.9 millimeters in size. But with a new system, we have a 2.2 millimeter di uh, inst um, instrument channel. So it allows us to uh, introduce tools more easily. But again, there is the greater ability for suction with this um, uh, bronchoscope. Now, classically, I'd use this bronchoscope if I wanted to go down to um, division six, seven, uh, because you suspect the slightly deeper endobronchial lesion. It will allow you to inspect the deeper uh, airways, but also allow you to um, put in slightly bigger tools uh, than with the previous scope. But what it also allows you is to suction uh, with tools within it. And for procedures such as bronchial thermoplasty, this is invaluable because this allows me to go um, as deep as possible with the uh, thermoplasty probe with direct vision, but also to have the suction capability that will allow me to perform um, the procedure more effectively. So this is the new interventional scope. And the amazing thing about this scope is that they've managed to shrink it by 0.4 millimeters. The previous interventional scope was 6.2 millimeters, whereas this one is now 5.8 millimeters and therefore allows us to go slightly deeper into the segmental anatomy than previously. And this is considering they've actually increased the instrument channel size to three millimeters. And this 0.2 millimeter increase in the instrument channel actually equates to a 20% increase in the ability to suction. For me, this is an invaluable um, change because what it means is that I can perform interventional procedures where there is a high risk of bleeding, knowing that I've got good suction capability, even whilst I've got instruments within the channel. It also means I can suction off secretions and other debris much more easily doing interventional procedures than with the previous scope. So once again, uh, Olympus have managed to deliver what uh, seemingly was not possible. Now remember, all of these new scopes are also embedded with our rotational function. Uh, and this I find is completely invaluable. Uh, for example, if you're trying to put an endobronchial valve in into the anterior segment into division one, this allows us to rotate. And that way our image is still very central and we get very accurate insertion of uh, your uh, valve or your tool that you're trying to put through with minimal uh, need to bend your back and, and, and sort of do yoga positions while you're doing bronchoscopy. So it's, this to me is one of the most amazing functionality that's been added to the Olympus platform. And I'm glad to see that it's still there in our new platform. So really to summarize, what I've hoped to show you is that we've got some groundbreaking improvements in imaging technology. I really did not think that the current imaging system could be improved on, but yet you can see some modalities which will make my job much easier. There is a clear role in the number of interventional procedures we perform from liquid nitrogen cryospray, which uses a very thin scope and needs to allow nitrogen to escape through to the ability for suctioning with different interventional procedures. Thank you.